Catherine Elizabeth, wedding photographer based in San Diego, and today I have an exciting guest here named Alexis, who is a fantastic hair and makeup artist here in San Diego. Hi, I'm Alexis. I have XL Beauty Company, and we're located in San Diego. We specialize in event hair and makeup, and bridal hair and makeup, and we just any event really. <laughs> yeah. So I've worked with Alexis a lot on some really fun projects and I thought it would be really fun to have her come here today to answer some questions I have all about hair and makeup. So if you brides are wondering about the ins and outs of the beauty process, Alexis is going to share her wonderful advice. Yay. So the first question I have is when should a bride book you? Like what's your ideal point and when is it sort of like getting too late and they need to hurry up? Yeah, I think that sometimes we get really forgotten in, in the event industry and we're kind of a really important vendor in yeah. our opinion because it's the way you look yeah. <laughs> and we are actually the first person that starts your day off. Mm -hmm. So like in the, those kind of things, we're really a, a big deal. Yeah. So I would say six months is mm -hmm. ideal and um, you would want to do your trial probably a month or two before okay. the, the event. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So... Like what's going to happen if a bride comes to you a month out? Like you're probably not going to be booked, but if you, you know, weren't booked, like how much more stressful is that going to be for them having done it so last minute? Yeah. I just think that you risk not having somebody available. That's good. And mm -hmm. if you're, if you're decent, you're going to be booked, you're going to be booking six to a year yeah. month out. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> so they're just going to be taken up completely. So don't yeah. wait too long. Make sure you guys are doing this. I booked mine really early in the process because it is such an important thing. You know, it's the way you look in pictures. So I would say like, don't skimp on yeah. hair. I would spend more to make sure that I looked as good as I wanted to look because if you don't like the way you look in your pictures, you're never going to want to look at them. And the photos are all you have after the wedding day. And don't you think like photography makeup is so different than just everyday makeup, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I always tell my brides, you need to have a little bit more on. You need to do things a little bit differently to get it to show up on camera and last all day. Yeah. A lot of my brides are like, oh my God, like it's so much more than I would normally wear. I'm like, it's fine. It'll look normal on camera. Totally. So like in person, it might be a little intense, but they've done it in a way so that it won't get lost in your pictures. Exactly. And I think also just feeling like the balance between it looks good to you in person, mm -hmm. natural and, and effortless, yeah. but also it's we know it's going to show up in a photo. Exactly. So it's kind of like your everyday version, but just amplified, Yes, I would say, is the way to go about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and like I'm not afraid of a lot of makeup <laughs> at all, so I'm not one of those brides who's like, I want to look like me. I'm like, I just want to look really amazing. Like, you can make me look 10 times better than normal, but a lot of brides want more closer to their everyday, everyday. just more of an event style. Yes, and we do say come to your trials with your everyday makeup on. That's mm -hmm. one of the tricks that we tell people so that we can get a really good gauge of what is the natural feel for you. Mm -hmm. And then we will build off of that, but still keeping in mind what's going to look good in a photo. Yeah, that's awesome. And so when it comes to the booking process, I encourage my brides to choose a team that does hair and makeup instead of splitting it up. Um, is that your preference? And yeah. what is it like if somebody books you for only makeup and then there's some other company for hair? How does that play out? Well, we've gotten to the point for a number of reasons that we just kind of um, have an exclusivity clause okay. where we don't, in rare occasions, we don't like to have a different team on board. Yeah. And that's for number one, timing. Num mm -hmm. Timing's huge. If we are depending on other people to coordinate timing we can't yeah. guarantee it sure. um, with our timing we have it down to a science and mm -hmm. we can literally say this is the start time this is the end time and mm -hmm. we can guarantee it and that's right. one thing that's as you know as a photographer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so important <laughs> you want like you want a really great artist who's gonna make you look great but also keeps in mind that the timeline's yeah. huge and if we start the day off late the mm -hmm. whole day is set off late oh my god the amount of times that I've worked with <laughs> mostly inexperienced teams or separate teams who clearly did not communicate and have made the day start 30, 40 minutes late, we lose out on pictures from that, you know, and sometimes the hair and makeup artist doesn't care because mm -hmm. it doesn't affect them, but the bride is the one who loses. She loses maybe the first look portraits and you have two seconds to get it done and then it's your ceremony and maybe we can't make up that time. So yeah. I think that's a great point that, you know, your timing can be a lot more set in stone and a lot yeah. more predictable when you're working with the same team that you're familiar with. Yeah. And then to jump off of that, it's also just like quality control. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel like there's so many different techniques and so many different 
ways that people can do hair and makeup and you want to try to find somebody who has the same kind of style with with their hair and makeup. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. I love that. You like when brides kind of come to the trial with a little bit of makeup already, maybe their everyday look. Do you like when they also come in with inspiration images? Like what what would be great for them to show you? For sure. I think that doing your homework prior to the trial is going to do so many things for you. One uh-huh. is it's going to make your trial the most effective. Okay. And you're not going to be sitting there scrolling through up at the trial trying to figure okay. out your look. I do tell my brides to look at things like for makeup. What color palette do you like? Right. Do, what kind of style shadow do you like? Do you mm-hmm. like it to be, do you like a smoke? Yeah. So I actually send out a questionnaire from all my brides to kind of pinpoint some questions mm-hmm. they can think about. Okay. Um, you know, do you like liner? Do you like your eyebrows done? Mm-hmm. How much? And so that they can start to think about those little things that make mm-hmm. such a difference. Yeah. Um, same with hair. Like, do you like more of a romantic style. And Mm -hmm. I I ask every single time, the first thing I ask is to see the dress because I think a lot of times, especially for someone who's never been married before, we'd Mm -hmm. see brides all the time. But for them, they could think they're having a really romantic dress, but they're Mm -hmm. really actually in a contemporary dress. So the style is going to really be reflected on the dress. And so you don't want like a really bohemian braided look if you have a really lacy classic dress. So that's kind of what we... Um, pinpoint at the trial and we send the questionnaire prior to the event so that you can kind of think about those things. Yeah, I think that's good because (laughs) I've kind of also seen where, you know, the bride was like, oh, I'm going to wear my hair up, but then I see her dress and I'm like, she should really wear it down Down. or vice versa, like wear it up because it's got this intricate back you're going to cover. So these are the kinds of things that, yeah, great hair and makeup artists would be like, oh, I think with this dress, it would look better to do this. Yeah. Um, and I think that education is really important it's because, huge. you know, they might not realize that. And then they're like, oh, you're so right. It's so much better. Well, and if you pick a really good vendor who's, you know, this is what we do every day. Right. right? Exactly. So we, I mean, I, I didn't really think about that when I was a bride. Like mm-hmm. I, you're a first time bride, so everything's yep. new to you. But when you're in the industry and you see it all the time, Mm -hmm. rely on your, your vendors to really guide you because we're there to help. Exactly. Yeah. I just did a video about this, um, that I'll link above about like, don't micromanage and make sure that you trust your vendors (laughs) because they know what they're doing because they've done it, you know, maybe even hundred plus times. Yeah. And the bride (laughs) has done it like, you know, probably no time. So it's nice to hire people that you trust in the first place mm-hmm. and then listen to their advice and their suggestions. Yeah. I think that's such a key component. Um, so this next one is something that I am super passionate about and I want to get your opinion. I prefer when brides don't have spray tans because I think natural skin tones photograph best, but I wanted to see your opinion on how spray tans affect the makeup application or how it wears or if it has any impact whatsoever it can I mean Mm -hmm. I don't think it's like detrimental at times I Mm -hmm. think that prepping for your spray tan Mm -hmm. and when you get your spray tan makes the biggest difference okay um you know if you do it like two days before so you've had time for it to set in Mm -hmm. and maybe just kind of wear off a little bit and not so bright yeah Yeah. (laughs) intense intense. um and if you have drier skin you got to take into consideration things to um prep before your spray Mm -hmm. tan so that your it doesn't show up in like Oh, a yeah. crusty way. That, that would be me. I've got very dry skin. Yeah, I can. And so you, and I, I think, um, don't try anything new mm-hmm. right before your wedding. You want to, yes. you want to try it out months in advance and yep. see how your skin does and find the perfect, mm-hmm. um, solution for your skin, for yep. your body, for your everything. Yeah. I think that's so true. I say that all the time. Don't do anything crazy that you've never done right before your wedding. Like, yes. Don't get some new kind of <laughs> facial three days out thinking you'll be okay. And then all of a sudden you're broken out or right. something crazy. 100%. So yeah, testing it is really good. Spray tan helps the glow though for the makeup. Okay. It does. It does look great. Mm-hmm. If it's done correctly. Right. You know? Yeah. I think that's the <laughs> tricky part too is I have seen a couple of spray tans in my life that actually looked really natural and weren't bad. And a key component of that was that they did not go too dark. Yes. Um, I think going too dark, no matter whether the tone of the spray tan is good or bad, is never a good idea because your groom looks like a dead person totally. next to you when you are, that's and you're point. not normally like that. Yeah. You know? 
And so that's something that's <laughs> good, good to keep point. in mind. So I have seen a few good spray tans. They're usually almost always on the more mild side. Yes. So it's just a touch and it's not, you know, it's a glow. Exactly. It's a glow yeah. versus a tan. Yeah. It's I not, you what... haven't been like painted a completely different <laughs> <Yeah>. color. <laughs> Love that. Okay. So we kind of talked about not doing new things right before the wedding, but what are some major like no-nos? Do not do this like at all to your hair or your face leading up to the wedding. Well, yeah. So I would say like, like going on to what we were just saying, don't try anything new mm -hmm. a couple weeks. You want to really vet each service, each mm -hmm. thing. So like lash extensions, mm -hmm. I recommend those a month out. Okay. And you really want to see, A, if you're allergic, um, if your eyes are sensitive to them. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you an opportunity like two weeks out to just get mm -hmm. a fill and have sure. a couple of times where you've done it. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't do any major facials that you've never done and mm -hmm. I think facials should probably start like six months out to okay. really give yourself mm -hmm. time to like correct anything that you sure. want to correct mm -hmm. um I think another one is just to make sure you are drinking a lot of water yes so <laughs> <Because> important <laughs> for, for skin I think what's crazy is if you just drink the right amount of water per day, yep. the way that your skin looks, and that doesn't cost any money. Right, that's free. <laughs> <laughs> when we're getting down to wedding planning, it's like anything that matters, yeah. that's the biggest thing you could do. So sure. more than anything, just stay away from really salty foods. Don't mm -hmm. do anything brand new that you've never done to your skin or hair. Yep. Um, and hair, you want to like highlight maybe two weeks out. You okay. don't want to be like, I think it's almost better to have a little bit lived in. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and no heavy conditioners right before okay. the wedding. Interesting. Yeah. And on the note of lash extensions, it's something that I've always been intrigued by, but I'm the kind of person where I hate like repeat appointments just for yeah. the rest of my life. So <laughs> I haven't done them for that reason. Um, but would you like, I, just for my own curiosity, if somebody has lash extensions, are you going to add in any extra lashes on the wedding day? Or is um, it, can it stand on its own? It can stand on its own. Honestly, those are like, I think for a makeup, application that's one of the best things you can do okay and for a couple of reasons one is if you cry at mm -hmm. all yeah. you don't have the risk of it of a lash falling off which yeah. is okay. huge another yes. reason um is it gives you a really big density at your lash line which okay. sometimes for people who want to go more natural mm -hmm. it you would almost get away with no liner it yeah. makes you kind of already have that like enhanced look. Sure. But then for the people who really want to get glam, mm -hmm. you could add a few more on yeah. top of that and then also a, a dramatic liner and okay. you have even more of a wow factor. Interesting. So it kind of for my brides, I will I tell them all the time like I don't do them, but yeah. I can refer you out and I honestly think that's the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Um and if you're going on a honeymoon, the nice thing is even if you don't keep it up, you'll have them for your honeymoon for yes. 2 weeks. And so <laughs> yes. It's just like a nice, you know, when you get to do this besides your wedding day. Mm -hmm treat yeah you know I I have not done them for the wedding day itself I've, I like I've thought about this a thousand times but I thought it would be kind of nice to have them for the honeymoon yeah so I don't have to worry you about mascara up. and we're having portraits taken then I don't have to worry about like trying to put on lashes and take and they are hour. addicting I will say <laughs> that's what I'm scared of <laughs> I mean I really did I had them for four years and they do your lashes grow back I mean I will be the first to say I don't have them on right now but um I just don't I'm a mom now, so that's probably why. <laughs> but I just think that they are they get really addicting because you wake up and you yeah. just already – I felt like I wore less makeup, honestly, with yeah. them because you look enhanced mm -hmm. naturally. Yeah. So That's cool. I love that. Maybe I'll have to give it a try. Um, <laughs> yeah, so sure. this next question is one that I see people ask all the time, and usually they're kind of complaining about it or they're just like, why, why, why? Why is it that a bride's makeup is going to cost more than like a bridesmaid or why does wedding makeup cost more than like yeah. whatever else makeup? Definitely. I think that, and this is a question I get all the time. And for number one reason is the bride, we spend a lot more time and a lot mm -hmm. more detail and a lot more steps. Okay. So you're going to get with a bridesmaid, you're not going to get gypped. I would say like yeah. per se, it's just, you're not going to get the entire like kit and caboodle you right. get way more time spent and detail mm -hmm. so i think that those are the two things that make it a more expensive service mm -hmm. um event hair and makeup it's not bridal hair and makeup bridal is right. is 
it's also an emotional day. Yeah. And you have to think about that. You're prepping for all these different factors mm -hmm. that are going to have your makeup look the best, the most mm -hmm. natural, and last the longest. Right. So you're, the detail that we spend is what mm -hmm. gives you that price. Right. And so what are some of like the little steps for makeup itself that you might do for a bride that you wouldn't do to somebody just, you know, going out to a fancy event for like three hours one night? Yeah. Maybe you would do a little bit more um, highlight con contour. Okay. You would do a little bit more of the baking, which okay. is like a, a setting process. Sure. Um, you would do a little bit more like lip preparation, okay. knowing you're going to kiss the bride more. Or, yeah, kiss the groom. Or the bride. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. It could be either one. <laughs> kiss your significant other. Right. <laughs> and um, and then the lash application is usually mm -hmm. included in that price too. Okay, fantastic. And yeah, I would think too, with a bride, you're working with them for so much longer. You're sending out that questionnaire. You're, you're taking the time to read that questionnaire look through their inspiration, yes. whereas somebody like a bridesmaid, you're not doing that. Like it's that's kind really of an on point. the day, like mm -hmm. here's what I'm thinking, whatever. I think that does, that. that's the day of what we were talking about. But yeah, mm -hmm. the behind the scenes is mm -hmm. another part of the factor of the price because yeah. we are, yeah, kind of for six months, if you book at the right time, we are walking through that process right. with you, timeline, mm -hmm. um, phone calls, yep. emails, and there's event hair and makeup, you're going to show up. Yeah. You're going to get, oh, I, I have a, a black dress and sure. smoky eye and that's it. You know, and you're yeah. not in a communication for six months with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, you know, not just extra makeup things. It's also your time and our time is valuable. So if we're spending several extra hours on a client that needs totally. to be compensated. Um, and I think the same way for if I'm doing event photography, that's not a wedding. It's so much more simple. There's way less going on. You know, there's so fewer components mm -hmm. that I have to worry about getting and I'm not spending 40 plus hours with them total. I'm maybe spending like 10 plus hours with them total. So the pricing totally. is going to be different for that. Totally. So it's a lot of time based, you know, and I think that that's a luxury service. You know, if you want to be the bride who just like shows up on the day of and is like, here's a picture, do it. Like, you know, that's probably going to be a completely different outlook and outcome than the bride who wants that service, yes. wants to really prepare and look her best in her photos. And I would say like, even with a trial, I, I've had people be like that on the day of mm -hmm. like, I don't really care. This is, but I've almost toyed back and forth for a while, whether or not like it should be guaranteed. You have to do a trial because yeah. it's such an important day and something you just don't want to be fussing with because mm -hmm. ultimately you want to enjoy yourself on that day. Yeah. And it's about having fun and being with your girlfriends. And we're the first people to be with you on your wedding day to set the tone. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you really just want to um, like sip mimosas and yeah. <laughs> eat your whatever and enjoy yourself and not worry about like, oh, do I like my eyebrows or yeah, exactly. that kind of thing. I feel the same way about engagement sessions. That's our trial for the yeah. pictures. I tell them, you know, you have a rehearsal for your ceremony. Yeah. The trial is for your makeup. That's like, it's rehearsal. The engagement session is like rehearsing for the, you know, wedding day. Totally. And when I have a couple who did not do an engagement session with me, it is different. I still do great work, but there is a different dynamic. They aren't as immediately comfortable with me. I right. don't know them as well. So I don't know that the groom does this funny thing with his foot when he poses. And, right. you know, I'm, there's yes. all these components You're, You work out it. the kinks. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of like your trial run. And it's where we learn about them. You learn about how their skin performs and all these yes. things. And so, you know, on the wedding day, you might have to adjust because of this person's X, Y, and Z. Yeah. They get a chance to wear it and go live their life. And then and they can come report back and say, hey, you know, I wore it for three hours yep. and I noticed that my skin kind of was a little bit oilier or what. Yeah. And so then we can adjust it and you don't have to worry on the day of. Exactly. That's definitely really nice. Um, so my last question for you is what are some of your top tips? You know, we've talked about drinking a lot of water, not doing anything new. What are some of the top tips that you would say brides should be doing maybe the week before the wedding or even mm -hmm. the day before to ensure that they get the best product? Well, it's just so funny because it's really about like, it's simple. It's yeah. Water, mm -hmm. beauty, beauty rest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because there is something about that. Yeah, and not too salty of foods mm -hmm. because that really will make you a little more swollen yeah. and, and poofy, bloated. Yep. bloated. And um, I think those three things. If you just did that, it's huge, right? Yeah. Also, sometimes we have people who break out, and mm -hmm. I think one of the things that brides trying to do is, oh, I got to correct this, and they they yeah. start to go 
extra on their skin or try to mm, pop this it or yeah. do that. And I think that sometimes less is more because if yeah. it's really a- attacked in a way yeah. that's like not good, <laughs> exactly. then you're left like having to cover up more of a mm. scar or like, you know, and mm-hmm. even if your skin breaks out, just maybe a, a mask or like, okay. like something like that. One of the um, weirdest kind of solutions I say is just take toothpaste. Yeah. And you have a zit, put a toothpaste on it. Like it's the weirdest <laughs> thing. I don't know how it works. Yeah. But it does. So just kind of take it easy, even if your skin has a wig, mm-hmm. freaks out. Okay. So say like the morning of the wedding, because this is something I was thinking about, and a bride has a blemish that's like raised and a little bit noticeable. Yeah. Would you rather her just leave it alone and you kind of cover up the coloring? There is a little bit of a bump, but the color's gone, or would you rather her? squeeze it and it's flattened but you might have irritation what's I think leave it because if you have an opened pore that can you know I hate to say ooze or yeah be weird (laughs) get gross then you that doesn't tend to cover up as easy right so if you have a bump yes it's a bump but you're gonna have Mm -hmm. a bump either way because in a day it's probably not gonna go away Mm -hmm. and in that case it's better to have it not having other issues the more you mess with it the more things that you're gonna have to start to deal with Mm -hmm. yeah less is more true I know it can be so tempting but it's definitely gonna be so much better if you just leave it alone yes let your makeup artist work with it and then I know at least for me um, if I have a close-up photo of my couple and I see a blemish I'll retouch that up Technically, it's not in my contract, but of those tight photos, I want them to like them. Yeah. So I am going to retouch that. If somebody has really heavy acne, that's another story. But if you just have a little breakout or two, you know, that's not a really hard thing to fix. I'm going to fix that for my couples on those tight shots and just kind of help them out. So between your hair and makeup artist and your photographer, Mm -hmm. you should be good to go even if you have some little mishaps. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure if they called you and said, hey, this is something that really bugs me. Yeah. You could yeah. Photoshop. Deal with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's nice to know these things. I think that that's all the questions that I have. Um, thank you so much Yay. for coming on today. I hope that all of you out there found this helpful. I will link all of Alexis's social media and website down below. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.